Hello and welcome to Live Wire Markets. My name is Chris Conway. On today's episode of The Pitch, we're talking about the Real Asset Management Healthcare Opportunities Fund. To do that, I am joined by Sam Wood, who's the Director of Funds Management at RAM. Sam, welcome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, RAM has been around for over a decade, Sam. What attracted you to the opportunity and how has the space evolved since you've been at RAM? What initially attracted me to certainly RAM was that they were developing a, a healthcare program and they were yep. starting to invest in healthcare properties. It's a sector I've always been interested in. I like the growth fundamentals that are in the sector and um, so I, I certainly wanted to pursue my property career in, in healthcare and so RAM presented a great opportunity. And how have things evolved since, uh, since you've been here? Initially, when I joined RAM in 2019, we were um, you know, investing in passive healthcare assets and, and um, growing funds under management. Since then, we listed on the stock exchange and we've developed two unlisted funds, one of which is uh, our new healthcare development fund. Sam, let's talk strategy. Uh, part of the strategy that underpins the fund is a focus on de-risk development and value add. What exactly does that mean for investors? Chris, it's a program that we're concentrating on um, because in healthcare you can undertake uh, opportunistic development programs and value add programs and significantly de-risk them prior to settling an asset. And so Typically, in any normal development, you've got three buckets of risk, being planning risk and construction risk and leasing risk. In healthcare, by partnering with our operators and choosing the right real estate asset, um, you can significantly de-risk the development opportunity or the value-add opportunity by committing the anchor tenant prior mm -hmm. to settling on the property and also getting the necessary planning approvals prior to settling on the property. So it's a sector that is very relationship based and that's certainly RAM's approach. Key to our program is establishing and maintaining really good relationships with our operators and um, identifying assets that suit their growth strategies. Sam, just a follow up question if I may. As you're assessing these opportunities that cross your desk, what percentage of them are the ones that you end up investing in? Say, out of a hundred opportunities that might cross your desk, there's five that meet the criteria that yeah, you want? Yeah, probably, Chris. It's yep. probably even less than that. Right. Um, I think going back to you know, partnering with our operators, we understand what makes them tick. We understand what assets are important. Um, a key characteristic in healthcare at the moment is um, access to the healthcare workforce. That's mm -hmm. what uh, a major constraint in healthcare and new opportunities are is, is, is the healthcare workforce. And so by locating um, new healthcare assets close to uh, the residing workforce, it creates a good opportunity for our operators to open successful uh, healthcare facilities. Sam, just a, a note there as well. How is that workforce moving around? I imagine it doesn't stay in the same place all the time. Do you have to stay on top of that? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. So we've uh, invested heavily in data systems, um, mapping the workforce, mapping, mapping both the specialists um, by subsector category. A key constraint at the moment is a shortage of nursing. Yeah. And so typically specialists and nurses don't live in the same location. However, we're concentrating on um, identifying opportunities between the workforce of the specialists and the, the nursing community to uh, make sure that that asset has access to, to both ends of the spectrum for the workforce. Fascinating, Sam. It's like everything, big data is driving big investment decisions, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. and it's, um, uh, there's so much opportunity for data uh, to drive those location decisions in healthcare real estate. It, it hasn't been done exceptionally well to date, so there is enormous opportunity to um, identify these underservice catchments for sure. Sam, let's talk about an investment opportunity in the portfolio right now that brings those factors that we were just talking to uh, to life. What have you got going on at the moment? Yeah, Chris, so uh, an asset that we've just settled on um, three weeks ago was a asset in, in Brisbane, six kilometres north of the Brisbane CBD. It was off the back of receiving a mandate from one of our operator partners for 
a requirement for a new 60 bed private mental health hospital in the nor northern corridor of Brisbane. We went about and identified three um, assets and with the operating partner worked through the details of, of those assets and selected the one that best suited them and also fit with our investment criteria. Um, we optioned that side up and, and made it a condition to get a material change of use to private hospital. Um, we achieved that prior to settlement. Um, as well as taking the leasing from about a 20% pre-commitment when we took the option to settling it at around 70% um, pre-committed. So by the time we'd settled the asset, you know, we had it substantially leased, um, the base building was completed uh, and, um, and we had the necessary planning approvals. So uh, out of the three buckets of risk we'd We'd mitigated and, and um, mitigated against leasing uh, significantly, and there was no uh, residual planning risk. Sam, thanks for sitting down with Lobby. Uh, my pleasure, Chris. Thanks very much for having me. If you enjoyed that episode of the pitch as much as I did, make sure to give it a like, and don't forget to follow our YouTube channel because we're adding lots of great content every single week. <laughs>